Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'm going to try to get a development environment installed for the SXB development boards for the 65134 and the 65265 microcontrollers, which are based on the 6502 and 65816 processors, respectively. The 65816 is a 16-bit extension of the better-known 6502 used in the Apple II GS and the Super Nintendo. A fellow named Joe Davidson has created a program called Easy SXB to allow communication with these SXB development boards and allow you to upload code to the boards easily. Unfortunately, it looks like this only works on Windows and Linux out of the box. Fortunately, another fellow, Carl Mathias, went through the work of making sure that it could compile on a Macintosh. So let's go take a look at their fork, because I don't think these changes have been upstreamed. And it says we have binaries that were compiled for Mac High Sierra 10.13. This was released May 31st, 2020. Let's see if it works on my Mac M1. Okay, it looks like in order to be able to execute this, I'll need to go into the terminal. Let's see. All right, so let's change the mode, all plus execute. There's only one thing in the directory. Okay, let's now try that. And we get a blank screen. Let's see, what about if I run the about? Oh says that, but I don't see anything here. So I can confirm that this does work on my older Intel Mac from 2015 that's running Mojave, but it gives me a blank window on my M1 Mac, which is running Big Sur. Okay, I don't like doing this, but let's try compiling from source. Let's see, have a readme file. Okay, so here's the usual thing that instead of downloading the zip file, you could clone the repository. Although, wait a minute, you wouldn't want to actually clone Joe Davidson's repository. You'd want to clone, you would want to clone the one from Carl's repository. Uncompress the FLTK 1.3.3 source package here. Oh, so we're going to have to go get that. Then make FLTK and then make. All right, let's try that. Although, actually, if I go back to the main source code repository, they're not using 1.3.3. They're referring to FLTK 1.3.5. Let me check that out a bit. Okay, so here's the Fastlight Toolkit website. Let's go to Downloads. So we saw a reference to 1.3.3 and 1.3.5. The latest version is 1.3.7. So let me download that. Let's uncompress that. One thing that concerns me is that this make file refers to FLTK 1.3.3, and we saw references to 1.3.5. So let's go back to that GitHub page, because I'm not sure this zip file I downloaded actually has the latest version of the code. Let's go check out the make file. Ah! Here it's referring to 1.3.5. So let me trash this version here and download it from here. So taking a look at that, if we take a look at the make file, ah, 1.3.5. Okay, so this is the one that I wanna compile. So let's take the FLTK folder and put that in the easy SXB folder. So let's start up a terminal, go to my working directory. I'm going to remove the easysxb-darwin.amd64. That's the old executable that doesn't work on this Mac. Let's go into our easysxb directory. That's hard to say. And let's do make FLTK. That's what it said it wanted me to do first. And it didn't like that. Oh, you know what? We need to edit the make file to handle the new version here. 
And I'll mention that the reason I am insisting on using 1.3.7 is that while I had the recording paused, I did try this with 1.3.5, and it does not want to compile on this machine. It threw all kinds of errors. So let's edit the make file. Okay, I paused the video to do that replacement, but we have 1.3.7 everywhere now. All right, let's try make FLTK again. Oh, are we having success? This is looking promising. No errors yet. I don't even see any warnings yet. Let me speed this up. Okay, that looks like success. Let me try make to actually build the easy SXB application itself. I just have one warning, but it seems happy with everything else. Let me try running the resulting compiled file. Let's see, it appeared on my other screen, but aha! Now we have stuff. I have menu items. I can select a board. I don't actually have a board hooked to the machine right now, but it looks like we are in business. Now we need an assembler. So Western Design Center provides these WC tools that includes assemblers and a bunch of other stuff. Unfortunately, it looks like this is just a Windows product. If you click on the thing that says Mac OS, it talks about VMware versus Parallels. I don't want to go down that road. I would like to just run it on my Mac. A programmer named Mike Cohn has created a lot of great example code for the 65265 SXB development board, and I wanted to be able to run the same examples, so I thought I should use Nekin ASM, which is the assembler that he chose. So let's click on that. And down here, we have the source code. There is a Mac OS executable you can download, but it looks like it's for the Intel architecture. I would like to just go ahead and try compiling it for ARM. This Intel executable would probably run fine on my M1 Mac using Rosetta emulation, but let's compile it from source just for practice. So let's decompress that. Let's go in here and take a look at the README. Huh, it doesn't say very much. Can I just type make and have it magically work? That didn't work. So let's try out the GitHub page. Let's see, documentation, installing. Let's see. Oh, it looks like it wants me to do dot configure first. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so let's say dot configure. It seemed to do some stuff. Now let me type make. Oh, it's doing some stuff. It has some dread lines. What are dread lines? Oh, it's probably D read line. It's not that it has lines that it dreads. All right, did that do something? Well, it has an executable. Let's try running it. Oh, wait, it wants me to put a dot in front, dot slash. Ah, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Let me move that executable to slash user local bin so I can run it from anywhere. And it wants me to super user do that. Pseudo make me a sandwich. And while I'm at it, let me do the same thing with this easy, with the easy SXB application. Move easy SXB to user local bin. Ah, forgot to pseudo again. All right, so now I should be able to say easy SXB, and that runs OK. Yes, please exit. And I should be able to also say Nick and ASM. And now we need to get some source code and hook up the board. Let's try the LED blinking program for the 65816 by Mike Cohn. And I've never quite figured out an easy way to just get a single file without downloading or cloning an entire archive. So let me just copy and paste this. Let's paste that into a file. All right, so here's some code that makes an LED blink by Mike Cohn. I should mention that I'm getting the 65816 assembly language highlighting from a particular extension. There isn't a extension specifically for the NEC and ASM assembler, but if you look up 65816 and the extensions, a bunch of them show up. And I tried all of them, 
And I found that this one, it said CA65 macro similar language support. So this is not Negan underscore ASM, but I found that it seems to be the best approximation for this assembler out of all the various ones that I tried here. So some other time I'll figure out how to make Visual Studio Code run Naked ASM when I hit the build button here. But in the meantime, let's just run it from the prompt. So I'll say Naked ASM blink.asm failed. Unexpected token. Okay, so this is kind of silly. When I have a space at the end here and I try compiling it, I get this unexpected token at the end. But if I take out the space at the end here and then compile it, then it's still not happy. Wait, what? How about if I put in a carriage return? Is it happy then? <laughs> then it's happy. All right. What if I have RTS and then a space and then a carriage return? It seems happy with that too. But if I don't, have this blank line at the very end, then it complains. <laughs> okay, that's that's just odd behavior. Anyway, let's see if this will go. All right. Okay, what did that actually spit out? It spit out an out.hex. Okay, there's probably a command line argument to give it a different output file name, but let's run with that. I think I'm going to need to know what the device file name is of the SXB that I just plugged in. Let's pipe that to more. Ah, I think it's this one, the cu.usb serial a 703 viiz I have no idea if that stays the same if I unplug it and replug it back in, or if it changes each time I do that. I'm not going to worry about that now. Let me copy that so I can use it later. I'm also wondering how the board looks from the finder, let's get a system report. Go down to USB, scroll down here a bit. Ah, here it is, the FT232R USB UART. That's the board. That's a good sign. Okay, let's try it. Here we have the Easy SXB. Let's pick the correct board model, which is the 265. Let's connect to the SXB. Let me paste in what we found earlier. So it's slash dev slash cu dot USB serial dash all this stuff. Could not open serial port. Let me hit the reset button on the board. Okay, so I did all the usual things. I unplugged it and then I plugged it back in. I rebooted the computer and then I went back to Carl's website and I noticed that when he refers to the Easy SXB, he runs it from the command line using this dash dash port option. So let me try that. Okay, let's try Easy SXB dash dash port. What port will we give it? We'll give it slash dev, all of this stuff here, cu dot USB serial dash blah, blah, blah. And... Let's try connect to SXB. Oh, connected to SXB at 9600 baud. I think if I hit the reset button, the monitor should show up. Ah, let's try typing H for help. Oh, now we're in business. All right, let's try upload program. Let's upload this out.hex. So I think it was at 001000. Let me double check that. More blink.asm. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, let's jump. And look, we have a blinking light. Success. And amazingly, it works through this tangle of adapters. Really just one adapter to the USB-C port on my MacBook M1 Air.